I would like us to do, first of all, is if you can define uh, microfinance. I, I know you said micro and then you said finance, but because you also use a word that I'm not sure I heard you use before, yes. but you use it now. You use competitive. competitive. Are you saying this in reference to government innovation? No, or whatever? No, Maybe no, I'm not, not going there. All. But okay, so because when you say competitive, no. that, you know, so you're like marketplace driven. Is that yes, what you mean? Not, so, is marketplace driven? Yeah. But in terms, the way it's a comparative. Uh, analysis of where microfinance is coming from. Okay. Because before modern microfinance, we've had microfinance um, as old as civilization itself. Yeah. You have money lenders, you have the revolving and credit associations yeah. and what have you. And money lenders and others tended to be monopolistic. Okay. The money, the money lender in a village is the, is the main guy. Yeah. So he puts up all kinds of conditions and whatever. But microfinance institutions were supposed to now be an improvement on those traditional characteristics. And so that's why you said competitive. Okay. So that you probably, it's not like they're going to be mono, oligopolistic or monopolistic and everything. There's still be competition, even though you are providing services to the poor. Mm. The manners they prefer and the manners they want. And that is exactly what microfinance. These are people who are formally, who are financially excluded. Yeah. They are locked out by the conventional, conventional, conventional banking system. Yeah. And so how do they get in? Mm. How do you open that door? These this poor people. These poor people. Yeah. Poor people, again, I say economically active, active poor. poor. When we get to that, when we begin to look at microfinance, there are two main approaches today. Okay. You find the Yunus, you just talked about Mohammed, uh, Yunus from Bangladesh and his Grameen Bank. Mm. So that is on one side mm. where they believe mm. that the best way to help the poor is through what they call the poverty lending approach. Okay. And they use subsidized credit okay. to give the poor people loans at affordable prices or highly subsidized prices. Okay. So that is the poverty lending approach. But then you have another group, mainly in Indonesia and Bolivia, who now say, no, commercial finance is it. Every microfinance bank, yes, you have a dual mission. There is social mission where you're concentrating on taking the poverty, leaving the poor out of poverty. But more importantly, you have to cover all your costs. Because that's the only way you can be sustainable over a time or period and continue to expand outreach and increase the, the, the probability or the possibility of reaching out mm -hmm. to a larger number of poor people. Mm -hmm. If you are not financially sustainable, then you may not be able to do that. Because subsidies, grants, and donors, donor funds do not last forever. They are not okay. sustainable. Okay. So they may be very important in the short term. Yeah. But if you are looking at the long term horizon, then you want to go somewhere beyond yes, be just uh, uh, subsidized credit. Commercial. Yes. Okay, okay. M 